Ah, uh, I. Where am it's I? It's all right, son. Don't panic. It's over. Uh, I'm back. Where are the guests? I invited them to go up to their rooms. They're resting. Don't worry. Gregory? We won, Louis. It's over. He's dead? Definitively. Now the way is clear. At any rate, rejoice. Great things await us. What did you do to him? I devoured his soul. You... but... I didn't see you use the Holy Lance. Indeed not. I didn't need to. Can't you guess how I did it? The Lance of Longinus is just a vessel, Louis. It could have been any object that had the blood of Christ on it. The blood of an ancient, more precisely. But I didn't need the blood of an ancient. You see, I have been in dear Lord Mortimer's physical body for longer than my brother has been in Sir Gregory Holmes. Therefore, I am an ancient, Louis. He was your brother. Why did you kill him? He never meant you any harm. Oh, Louis, I, I am exhausted. Let's talk about this later. No, tell me why now. I want to understand. <sighs> Stubborn as a mule. After centuries of trying to convince him, I assure you I had no other option than to do away with him. He would never have allowed me to depose our father. In the past, he had already opposed me, and sometimes very violently. He seemed to you like a man of peace, because you did not represent any danger to him. But I can assure you, he was not. With anything to do with our father, he would be merciless. In any case, what's done is done. I'm going to rest in the dining room. Join me there when you're ready. The time has come to end this little antisocial gathering. No doubt about it. This family is rotten to the marrow. I did right not to trust them. Home told me that my last resort was to find my sister. I hope Emily's in her room. What are you uh, doing? Monsieur Volner asked me to prepare his belongings in anticipation of his imminent departure. Sir. His departure? So quickly? Oh yes, he seemed to be in rather a uh, hurry. Very well. Would you know where I might bump into him one last time? Ah, if sir would like to say goodbye, sir will find him in his room. Thank you. Johan. Louis. Uh. I haven't the time. What are you doing? I'm getting out of here. What do you think? I'm going as far away as possible. Sir Gregory is dead. And in case you haven't grasped it yet, I am no longer safe here. If you value your life, you had better do the same. Hey, 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 no, wait a second. No, no, I haven't time. Good luck in the future. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Emily? Yes. What's happening, Lou? You look... I... Ho Holm is dead. Good God, he did it! What do you mean? He warned me that Mortimer would probably try to get rid of him. He couldn't believe it himself, but we have to admit that he was right to be where We are in great danger, Louis. Wait. What are you talking about? When Gregory came to warn me, he assured me that we would be the next to go down. But that's impossible! He's our father! I'm only repeating what Gregory told me. When I brought up the possibility of us running away as quickly as we could, Gregory dissuaded me. He thought that Mortimer would see it coming and that we would have no chance. I guess I agree with him. And now we're here. I'm not going to let him get away with it. There's two of us now, Emily. We can count on each other. Well, on that note, I haven't told you everything, Louis. This might be a bit hard for you to accept, so I wanted to warn you. There are three of us. Surprise, brother. Excuse me? It's Emma, Louis. Just before he disappeared, Holm explained to me how to bring her back from the ether. We were pressed for time and... And the only body she could find was one of those cursed servants. Can you believe it? Emma, don't start, please. I didn't exactly have much of a choice. 
Be that as it may, I'm the one inside the body of a masked lackey. I had to deal with the most urgent thing first. We'll try and get you out of there as soon as we can. Just as I promised you. And I'll make sure you make good on your commitment, sister. Emma, for the last time... She is better, don't worry. Being a demon changes many things, and the prospect of getting stuck in the ether for eternity has opened her eyes. Well, I guess it's your decision, but I hope you know what you're doing. Are we ready? Can we go now? Louis, at this point, it doesn't matter what you think about me. You need me. I'm guessing you are well aware of what we're about to face, aren't you? Not really. No. That's just what gives us a chance, is it not? It's usually the only argument the Reckless have in their favor. Take heart. We're only about to confront an age-old creature that can read our thoughts and force us to act against our will and wants to devour us. So what's the problem? If that is your attitude, I suggest we reevaluate the possibility of running away. Stop it. Let's all just calm down. Only a few minutes ago, it was just the two of us. Things are looking up. Our chances are only getting better. How do we get rid of him then? Killing him won't change a thing normally. He is capable of changing bodies. I know how to kill a demon, and the irony of it is, he's the one who revealed it to me. We have to make him touch the blood of an older demon in order to encase him in his mortal body. This is the only way that might give us a chance of dealing him a fatal blow. And I've got the Holy Lance. What's that got to do with demons? Christ was his father. Believe me, if we get out of here alive, I'll have a lot of juicy details to tell you about the family. This lance actually received the blood of an ancient demon, and it can work on Mortimer. Let's do it then. Are you sure you're ready for this? Will you be all right? Yes. Yes, I feel a lot better. Don't worry about me. As you wish. Louis, there you are. Look, she's better. Perfect. Good. Are you ready, Louis? Can we go? Yes. Let's get it over with. Louis, I've been expecting. Oh, I see you haven't come alone. To what do I owe the honor, Duchess? I thought this discussion should concern the whole family. Surprise, Father. Hmm, Emma. You brought her back from the ether. Well, I am impressed, my children. It's over, father. We can't let you go on like this. Enough! Ah! Louis! Who on earth do you think you are, for heaven's sake? Did you think I wouldn't know what you are planning? You are mere insects compared to me. You never had a chance. Help! My head! Let's do it! Now! Ah! How dare you! Keep going! It's working! Get him! Oh, Louis! No! No! Don't do it! It's over! You've lost! No, Louis! No! Stop! Oh. Oh. <laughs> My son! You will regret your actions when you see him. Come, Louis. It's over. Let's leave. As Mortimer had planned, Napoleon Bonaparte sold Louisiana to the United States after purchasing it from Spain. Bonaparte continued his political and military ascension until he proclaimed himself emperor. 
he went on to invade a large part of Central Europe. The legend of Napoleon persisted after his death, conferring on the emperor the role of Messiah for France. Remaining very popular, George Washington put an end to the various internal rebellions without violence and re-established trade agreements with Great Britain. Upon his death, he became a national hero and left an entire nation in a state of mind. On his return to Spain, Manuel Godoy proceeded to give Louisiana up to France. Later on, he became the target of the Crown Prince of Spain, Ferdinand VII. The latter gave no respite to his mother's lover, going as far as condemning him to exile. He confiscated all of Manuel's titles and possessions, as well as those of his mistress, Pepita. Pursued, they ended up living out their last years in France in poverty and anonymity. The influence von Volner had over King Frederick William ironically ended up working against him. The sovereign thrust him into increasing repression until the end of his reign. Von Volner became the object of the people's hatred, was therefore stripped of his titles and land by the new king, and died in poverty to general indifference in the Prussian countryside. The Duchess, through her close ties with the crown, made it possible for Great Britain to build closer links with the United States on both the diplomatic and commercial fronts. She became inseparable from Marchioness Cunningham, reputed for being the most influential mistress of King George IV of England, and whom she inducted into the Golden Order. His eminence was obliged to justify himself on his return from the British Isles over the letter he had sent to His Holiness. Unable to say more about the superior dark forces that he had spoken of, his mental health was brought into question. He was consequently withdrawn from papal state power and it became preferable to speak politely about a faraway retreat when referring to his anonymous confinement in an asylum of Rome. Sarah de Richet never returned from her trip to the English Isles. Her disappearance spelled the end of the Golden Order and was the object of gossip for almost three days at the court of France. On his return from Paris, Peru resigned from his posting as judge at the revolutionary courts. He withdrew to the south of France with his daughter until his death. No more was ever heard of Lord William Mortimer. His sudden disappearance was the subject of conversations in the European courts, but only for a few months.